Well, hello there, friends. Welcome to Mid-Morning Manna, coming to you today from the auditorium of North Harrison Baptist <laughs> Church. So glad to see you today, and I hope you'll stay tuned for these 10 minutes of inspiring and uh, hopefully inspiring and helpful thoughts uh, about Christmas today. I want to speak to you about the unclaimed Christmas gift. The unclaimed Christmas gift. You ever expect some people to come for Christmas and you bought the gift, a nice gift, and you racked it up real pretty and you put it under the tree and uh, then those people didn't show up. All you got was a, a note in the mail or a, or a brief phone call that says, sorry, couldn't make it. And you, you went to all that expense, you fretted over it, you'd hoped they'd like it, you, you'd, you'd done your, the very best you could do, humanly speaking, and they didn't show up. And the gift went unclaimed. Well, I'm telling you, so many people treat the Lord that way. And you think about the gift of Christmas, you, think, what, you say, preacher, what is the gift of Christmas? Well, if you go over to the Gospel of John, chapter 3, it's very simple. But we could go to, John, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, and talk about the birth of Christ. We've been doing that all this past week, and we've been doing it on Sunday at the church, Sunday morning, Sunday night, talking about Mary, the virgin birth, and talking about uh, other, other things surrounding the birth of Christ and how important all that is, not discounting that. But I want to tell you something. It is so important that people claim the gift of Christmas, how important that is. And in John chapter 3, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 16. And uh, listen to what he said. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. There's that gift he gave. The Lord Jesus Christ gave his Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Isn't that something? God wants you to be saved. And he prepared a special gift. God prepared salvation in hope that. And as a matter of fact, the Bible says it's not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's not God's will for anyone to perish. So this gift is for everyone. And he said that he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not uh, believed on the, in, the, in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Oh, what a horrible thought that because men love the world more than they love the light of the world. Who is the light of the world? The Lord Jesus Christ. He is that light. He is that gift of God. The gift of God, eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Bible says very clear about it. So the first thing I want you to notice as, as we think of the unclaimed Christmas gift is this, the unclaimed Christ. Boy, how important that is to realize that Jesus Christ came, that we might have that gift of life, and yet he became an unclaimed gift. And I want to challenge you during this Christmas season to double check on your own heart, on your own life. I had an individual tell me, uh, even um, this last week, I had a, a lady uh, tell me, uh, preacher, I believe I'm saved, but I'm not really sure. Uh, so we just need to take care of that. We need to help you make sure either you are saved or the consequences of that is that you've rejected the gift and you're lost. And if you were to die today, if you, if you were to be in an accident out on the highway somewhere and just boom, slipped out into eternity, you'd be lost forever. And I'm telling you folks, what a, what a great opportunity God has given us to not only to be saved, but to have that positive assurance to know that we're saved. So it's almost like a double gift. God said, I'm going to save you, and I'm going to give you that assurance. And that assurance is based on the word of God, on the promise that God made when he said, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he didn't end that with a question mark. He ended that with a period. And there's a lot of people, politicians like to use that. I'm telling you this, and this is the way it is, period. Well, I, that, oftentimes that means nothing. And the fact 
checkers check them out, find out that it never happened to begin with and that they didn't tell the truth. But I want to tell you something. God told the truth. And he said if you'd believe on him, then he would save you. What a wonderful gift. The gift of God, the Bible says, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you have that gift today? If not, why don't you why don't you send us a, a, a private message and let us get in touch with you and tell you how to be saved. You say, well, preacher, I don't live anywhere near your church. You don't have to go to our church. There's good Bible-believing churches in all parts of the country and many in parts of the world. Just let us know where you are, communicate, send us a message, and we'll communicate back with you, give you that good gospel story. I believe God will help you. Will you do it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we don't have to have an unclaimed gift out there. Lord, we can claim that gift of life, eternal life, through Jesus Christ. Lord, we can claim our hope in heaven.